Amazon, a trillion dollar company. I'm sure you've heard of it. They sell literally millions of products every single day and deliver them right to people's doorsteps. If you're like the majority, you've probably got one yourself. But who is really selling all those products? It's not this guy. It's everyday people like you and me sitting at home on the couch. Because to the surprise of most people, the majority of sales on Amazon come from third party sellers. It's these people, the people like my students, Aria, Dana, Michael, that are sitting home making the sales and making the big bucks. So the question becomes, how do you do the same? Hey, it's JT Franco. I am the no bullshit Amazon guy here on YouTube. And I'm gonna answer that burning question for you because if you're here right now, you're in one of a couple camps. Either you just found out about Amazon FBA, you found out about this new opportunity and you're starting here. If that's you, awesome, welcome. This is a great place to start, right? I'm gonna go through this whole thing or either, either that or you've been dabbling in Amazon, you've been thinking about it, uh, you've been in and out, you've been researching and you just got super confused, you're super, um, you know, like stuck in analysis paralysis, you don't know where to go and you just want a video that can put it all together for you step by step so you can watch the video, go out there, start making money without the confusion, without the BS and if that's you, great because that's exactly what I'm gonna do for you today in this video because Amazon FBA is such a great business model, it's such a great platform that we're allowed to use and it, it saved me, it saved me from rock bottom and it allowed me to live the life that I wanted to live and it can do the same thing for you as it did for all those students that I showed you at the beginning of this video and it's just about making the choice the choice to pursue it the choice to learn it and the choice to submerge yourself in it and take action right because life is all about choices now when I was a teenager I was left with a choice I was failing high school uh, I was terrible I just did not fit into the system I could not do it. I did not get it and my dad left me with a choice he said hey you know what JT if you're gonna fail high school you have the choice of either turn it around and graduate or you can leave the house so I'm like you know what fuck that I'm gonna fail anyways so I'm gonna leave I'm gonna drop out and I'm gonna leave now so as a teenager I dropped out of high school I left my house and I started a catering company I started working 15 hour days I started you know hiring employees paying this massive overhead all this cost is food insurance work safe all these things I never had any idea about and I spent money all the money I ever had all the money I didn't have and at the end of the year I was negative I lost money and I was on the path to lose money for the next five years, money that I did not have and I could not get, right? So I was left with another set of choices. Either I could go back home to mom and dad or I could work uh, nine to five, you know, like minimum wage job for the rest of my life. And luckily, uh, I found out about Amazon FBA, a new business where I didn't need to work 15 hours a day. I didn't need to have crazy overhead costs, employee costs, employee insurance, food costs, and best of all, I could do it all from home and I needed no education. I found my first product and I, I went to a manufacturer in China, got it manufactured and then I listed that product on Amazon and that was that. And that is literally the model of Amazon FBA. Those three steps, find a product, manufacture the product, list that product and launch it. Now the problem is that that product that I launched failed because I didn't know what I was doing. So today, what I'm going to do for you is what I wish I had when I started is I'm going to lay out all the steps to make sure that when you find that product, it will actually make you money, no BS updated absolutely with the brand new stuff, all the newest techniques. So let's get right into it. This is going to be an entire Amazon course basically in a single video for you. Uh, so what we're gonna learn in this video is, number one, product research. What are you looking for and how can you find it? Number two, finding a supplier. How to contact suppliers, how to vet your suppliers, and also how many units should you order on your first order, all right? Number three, shipping. How do you ship a product from the supplier to Amazon? How do you create a shipping plan? What shipping method should you use? All right, number four, creating your listing, okay? The importance of your listing, creating a listing that's meant to sell, okay? And then finally, how to launch your product and how to get advertising and traffic uh, with PPC, Amazon's PPC. So that by the end of this video, you should know exactly how to do all this, do it properly, do it effectively, so you can go home and make some money. So let's get right into the goodies. Yeah. Bless. I just want to win, yeah. LA BB who we running with, yeah. Product research. This is the crown jewel of Amazon FBA. Everything you do is going to revolve around product research because 
you make all your money when you select your product, right? You make the money once that product is selected, not once that product is listed, right? You have to know your numbers. You have to know exactly what you're doing and what you're looking for so you can find a product that's gonna make you money and not lose you money. So this is the great battle of Amazon FBA. So we're gonna cover this one extensively, all right? So first, what are you looking for? And second, how are you gonna find it? So with Amazon FBA, uh, this entire process, at the beginning, there's one thing you are gonna need um, outside of just your brain and a computer. It's gonna, gonna be a tool, right? Now, I like to tell people you don't need it, but it's highly, highly recommended. Imagine if you're a chef, this is your knife. If you're a lumberjack, this is your chainsaw. This is just a tool that's gonna make everything a lot easier, and it's called Viral Launch, all right? So Viral Launch is a software that's gonna help you find products, and I'm gonna be using it throughout this this uh, video. So if you don't have it, there's a link in the description. You get 15% off for the rest of your life. Uh, of course, it's an affiliate link for myself, um, but if you don't want to get it yet, it's okay. Just follow along, watch what you're doing. There's other software that's similar to it, but Viral Launch is just what I like. So what are you looking for, right? That's the question. What makes a good product? Because there's a million, bazillion, trillion products on Amazon. Which one is the right one for you to sell? So there are five pillars that I like to teach, okay? Five pillars. Now, you, as you go around YouTube, as you do more research, maybe you've already seen a lot of people like to use these criterias um, or these super hard outlines for you to stay stick in, right? It must be under a pound. It must have less than 75 reviews. It must have 300 sales a month. Like all these crazy things. But there's more to the game than that, right? There's a lot more, um, you know. Um, nuances to it than just sticking within criteria. So I like to talk about the five pillars that's gonna be the foundation for your empire, right? Because that's what we're building here. So the f pillar number one, what you're looking for is what I like to call sales signs, right? So sales signs, is there signs of this product getting sales? So how are you gonna find that out? Of course, you're gonna be, be um, I'm gonna show you how to find it out, but just for the conceptual, for you to understand, you wanna find a product that obviously is selling well so that you know when you enter that market you, and you sell that same product, you will sell well as well. But you just don't wanna find one product that sells well. It has to be the whole market that sells well. And to the extent of how well that market's gonna sell is gonna be what we're talking about in the next one. But sales signs, first off, you want to have a product that obviously is selling well. And a good rule of thumb actually is um, th about 300 sales a month. But again, it's just a rule of thumb, not a hard and fast rule. So look for a product that has good sales throughout the market. Okay, so the next thing, uh, number two, the second pillar that you're gonna be looking at is the opportunity balance. Okay, now this one is a little bit harder to kind of understand unless we go through it, but essentially, I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say, look for a product with high demand and low competition, right? That is obviously uh, great advice, but there's a lot of levels to high demand, low competition. Okay, so for example, there can be a market that is high competition, but it has high demand and it's a bigger market size, so you can get in there and you can still make money somewhere in the middle of that market, right? The problem with that is that since there is higher competition, it's gonna be a little more expensive, um, it's more risk, but you're probably gonna be, have more reward. Bigger market, more money, equals more risk, but bigger reward, okay? On the flip side of that, there can be a smaller market, not as much competition. It's a lot easier for you to get in there, rank a little bit higher maybe even, um, but even at a higher rank, you'll be making less money than you would over here. However, it's easier, it's less risk, it's an easy win, right? It's an easy win for you to get under your belt, and that's what I usually suggest for the first product. Like, you'll see people post on YouTube, and I've posted many videos of myself, find a product that makes $50,000 a month, how to find a product that makes $100,000 a month, all these crazy numbers. However, there's a lot of stuff um, with that comes with those products that's more expensive to actually make that money with those products. So, sometimes I like to say for the first product, find a product that makes that's going to 100% bank you, or not 100%, but really highly confidently bank you like 1,000 bucks profit every single month, right? 1,500 bucks profit every single month. Now that might not seem so exciting, but now you think about it, hey, now you can do that again, right? You can do that again, you can do that again, and you have four products that are making you 1,500 bucks a month, right? All of a sudden, you're making 6,000 bucks a month, um, and it was an easier win to, to find one product that makes you 6,000 bucks a month, okay? So that's the opportunity balance, balancing the opportunity um, that you have, and again, there's no right or wrong there. It's more about where do you wanna play in, uh, what are your goals, okay? So the third thing you're gonna look at is the Grand Slam screen, all right? So the Grand Slam screen is what I talk about in the Empire Academy, which is my full academy for Amazon FBA, and the Grand Slam screen is, can you make it a Grand Slam? Now, really quickly, a Grand Slam basically is a product that is gonna knock it out of the park because it is different, right? So 
you don't want to just find a product that has, you know, has great sales signs, uh, it has opportunity, a great opportunity balance that you're happy with, but then you're gonna go and copy the exact product. That's not what you wanna do. You wanna stand out, you wanna make it a grand slam, so look through the product. Is there a way you can make it stand out, right? Will more quantity do that for you? Well, can you improve the quality? Can maybe a different variation? Can you bundle it with another item and that will be your grand slam, right? So pass it through the grand slam screen uh, to find out if it's something that you can sell, right? So now the fourth thing is called empire potential. Right, does this product have the potential to build an empire off of it? Right, because that's what we're trying to do. We're not looking for short term, uh, a short term win, we're looking for long term gains. So, building an empire off a product means can you build a product line? Right, can you build a portfolio off this product? So, if you have you know, maybe three products, you pass them through the first few pillars and you're like, okay, this is good. Now, which product actually can you build a line off of? Is it this a one off product or is it something where, hey, there's a lot of related uh, products that you can go? Is a lot of ways you can brand this product and have an actual uh, succinct product line off of it. So that is the fourth thing. And then the last thing we're going to look at is profitability, cash flow, right? If you pass it through all that, it looks great, but it's not actually going to make you any money, toss it in the garbage because that's not the game we're in here for. We're trying to make money off this stuff. So you got to know your numbers at the end of it. So that is what you're looking for. That if you can knock that off your list, all of those check boxes off, you have found a great product. Now we're gonna get into the actual how to do that where you can come here behind my shoulder, look over my shoulder as we go through this and actually try to put this into action to take it from a concept into a reality. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're in my computer now and this is what Viral Launch looks like. So when you hit Viral Launch, go to Product Discovery, right? And then Product Discovery, you have Product Search, Keyword Search, Brand Search, and Category Search. So each of these is gonna um, have the same kind of look, filters, right? And then you can, um, it'll shoot out either keywords, brands, categories, or products. So right now we're going to focus on products to keep it simple. Okay. So for products, uh, you select your categories, or you can even go with presets, right? The small starters, high review earners, but I like to just put my own stuff in here. So if you want, you can go ahead and copy these categories that I have clicked off. These are just ones I use. You can go with whatever you want it to go with, but just know some categories are gated. So make sure you check on that uh, before you proceed. All right. So you got the categories done. So now we're going to go and enter our monthly sales, our price, monthly revenue and review count that we're looking for, right? So monthly sales, again, rule of thumb, I like to just start off with like 300 monthly sales minimum, price anywhere between like 18 to 30 something, 40 something. Again, d there's no hard criteria, just go with what you wanna go with, but I like to keep it under 50 bucks, generally, generally, right, under 50 bucks. So I'll just do like, like um, $39, okay? Um, and then price, you don't wanna go lower too low, uh, lower than like 20 bucks usually because at that price point, if it's like a $7 item, you don't have much profit margin, right? Which is the final thing uh, on the five pillars is the profitability. So I like to put like some whatever, 17, 18. Monthly revenue minimum, I wanna see at least $7,000 a month. Otherwise it's not even worth um, looking at it, right? Um, then review count, uh, anywhere less than like 120, right? What I had there, 120, 130. And then again, once you go through these and you press show product, it's gonna show products, uh, but then always play with these, right? So don't feel like this is the only thing you can do. Once, if you don't find any products, go up and change it to maybe 19 and 42, uh, you know, review count 110, monthly sales 350, uh, monthly revenue, you know, 8,000, whatever it may be, uh, go like that. And then press show products. And then Violent, you're gonna spit out products that match your exact criteria, right? So now this is product research. That's what you're looking for. And this is what your mostly your day is gonna, you know, be. And typically people that do this every single day, it'll take you like a week to two weeks to find a, like a handful, if not a bunch of really good products. Now there's a lot of different ways to look for products, but just doing this is the most simple. This is how I found my first product, right? It's how a lot of students find that my, my students find their first product because it's simple, it's easy to do, uh, and it gives you a good opportunity to look at a lot of products, right? So I'm just scrolling through here because there's are things I've kind of seen before. So what we're gonna do, once you find something that you think, hey, maybe that's interesting, um, maybe it's like an interesting thing to sell on Amazon, all you gotta do is click, I'm just gonna find something here. So all you gotta do is click this. You gotta click the view on Amazon button, right? And then it's gonna take you to Amazon, it's gonna take you to the exact product. And then what we do from here is we're gonna grab the main keyword, which I think is the main keyword, just based on the title, right? That's what it is, what the product is, it's a paper towel roll. Um, and then go to all departments and search for that, okay? So now once you've searched for that, what are you gonna see right off the bat? You're gonna see a lot of, obviously this is uh, a lot of brand name products, right? But what we're gonna do to get the numbers is go ahead and click this uh, Viral Launch Market Intelligence drop down. Now once you get Viral Launch, you will have this tool 
And what this tool does is it pulls the data from all the products on the page, uh, estimated data, and it gives you the numbers, right? So it tells you how much it's selling, which is what, of course, the sales signs, right? And then you can look through the opportunity balance. So how competitive is the market and how big is the market? Is there room for you to get in there, right? And then you're gonna look at the grand slam screen. How can you make this different? How can you make your paper towels look different? Then you look at the empire potential. Can you build an empire off this and then profitability? So obviously I already knew going through this I was gonna be a super competitive product because it is paper towels and you're competing against bounty and you know all these different things. So I just wanna show you what this looks like. So monthly revenue, you know, quarter million dollars every single month, $1.5 million every single month, right? And then if you're gonna go ahead and look at the reviews, uh, the reviews are just insane. None of them, all, most of them are above like 200, right? 8,000 reviews. So this is a, definitely just a market that you don't want to look at, okay? Uh, it's just crazy. So we're gonna keep on going. So that's exactly what product research looks like. Okay, I actually did that as a, a demonstration of what product research is. You put in your filters, um, you press show products, and you just look and look and look and look for products. And you just literally, what I do is if I see something interesting, click view on Amazon, Go back, keep looking. Click view on Amazon, go back, keep looking. And I'll just go through page on page on page uh, of this, right? What is this? Picture frame. View on Amazon and keep looking, right? So now, once you have all these open, you can go ahead and do exactly what I showed you. Look through the market intelligence and look for something that looks decent. Now, for the sake of keeping this video short, as short as can be for an entire, basically an entire course and a video, I pull up a product that um, is something that you would look for uh, when you're looking for products. So that's my market intelligence came up. And market intelligence is gonna show you the product price. So $35, it's a great price point. A monthly sales, 273. Uh, and then the average, um, that has a product idea score, right? So this is Viral Launch's kind of, you know, uh, suggestion. So if you see a product idea score four and higher, that's a, you, you know you're in a good spot, but don't trust that exactly, right? Um, so now that we're in here, what we're gonna do is again, do the same thing. So look at the monthly revenue and look at the uh, monthly review quantity. So I'll just sort by review so we can kind of see where does it taper off. So they got the outliers here, right? So these guys are the big boys in the market. And of course they're taking in most of them, a lot of the money, right? So shouldn't be most of the money, but a lot of the money. So if they were taking, if this was all the big boys and they were taking most of the money, then that would not be a good market. That's it would be a market where it's dominated by just a few sellers and there's no room for you to get in there. Okay, so they have a decent amount of money with these guys, but where does it drop off, right? So let's say it's 107 reviews. That's 107, 145, where, how deep is this market? How far does it go? And where can you get in? And what will you be making? Right, so these guys, 100 reviews, $8,000, right? 68 reviews, $55,000, $32,000, right? $15,000, and it goes down. As, as it keeps on going down, you still have room to get in there and make money, right? So only 20 reviews, $10,000, guys, right? Now, this is the kind of stuff that we are looking for, right? This is a, an ideal market to kind of dig deeper into, right? Three reviews, six grand. So what we would do now, we have a, a looked at kind of the, um, the sales signs, right? There's, they're making the sales, they're making money, the opportunity balance is there. It's a market where, you know, there's room enough for you to kind of get in the middle. And if you got into to the middle of this market, you'd be at like 50, 40, 40 reviews, make $10,000. Could you get into there? And could you make that? Could you get into the middle of this market um, if I show you exactly the steps to get there? 100% you could. It's not that hard, right? Um, now, is there something wrong with this product? I don't know. I just found this the other day. I don't know if there's more to do. So that's why you always gotta look, do your due diligence, right? There's more to look at. You gotta look at if it's trending. You gotta look at, um, you know, maybe it's a fad product. Maybe it's seasonal. Maybe it's only when people graduate in the summer times, right? So that's something you wanna look at because it is July right now as of this recording. So yeah, this is something where uh, maybe this is just spiking at the moment. So we wanna dig deeper and dig deeper. Now we're gonna look next at the um, Empire Potential or the, sorry, the Grand Slam screen. Where can you differentiate, right? Is there anyone that's doing something different? Here, you got two packs, right? A two pack of the, a two pack of the diploma thing. And then you have one here where you can hold the little, what is that, tassel, right? So where can you be different? Maybe you can do a little bit different design. What, what is actually a different differentiation that's gonna resonate with people? Now, quick thing that you can look at for differentiation or bundling is if you click on it, people usually put a frequently bought together. So frequently bought together is a good indication that, hey, the people are buying two of these, maybe if I put them together, that'll do well, right? Uh, so that's just one thing to look at. And then next, we're gonna look at the, what is it? The um, Empire Potential. So if you do this diploma frame, where can you go further to you know increase your line? Are you gonna become a, you know, maybe a school products line? Are you gonna become a picture frame line, special frames, right? Are you gonna be 
just, you know, there's different ways to look at this and you can go and click and look at, again, the frequently bought together, the different recommendations that Amazon gives, or you can actually go and click on Golden State Art, see what they're selling, right? They're an art thing. They do, oh, there you go. They do all types of frames, show boxes, showcasing kind of stuff, right? Display items. So you can go in there and look at that and then you can even go ahead and grab Golden State Art, right? And go back to product discovery and then go to brand search and look at uh, Golden State Art. If it was it one word, I don't know. So Golden State Art, here you go. Probably these guys, because they have 2,000 products, right? And you can see the full uh, viral launch analysis on this brand. And then this is actually a way, the brand search is a way I've looked at a lot of products and found products to launch similar to my own product, right? So you can see there, everything. You can literally see everything. Total monthly revenue, 4.7 million. Uh, totally monthly profit, 2.7 million. Then if you go down, you can see the products. So this is kind of what we're looking for. Maybe these products are matching up with our criteria, something we can launch that would, that would you know, give us a suggestion of what to look at when looking at the empire uh, potential, right? And then finally, we're looking at profitability. So to find profitability, where we're gonna go is we're gonna go to the Amazon FBA calculator. So you just search in Google Amazon calculator, and then you got the FBA revenue calculator. That's the first thing that's gonna come up. Click on that, okay? So now what you wanna do is you're gonna go back to your product, Right, and just click on one of the ones that's like, but in an average price range, so the average price was 33 bucks. You search your product, right, and then just grab one of them. I'll grab one that's like in the regular price range of $33, right, 39 bucks, grab this one. And you're gonna go ahead and grab the ASIN. So the ASIN, you're gonna find it up here in the URL after the DP, so it's gonna be this one. Start with B0, so that's the ASIN, you grab that. Go to the Amazon calculator, enter the ASIN and search it. So now Amazon is actually, this is a service by Amazon. They're giving you the actual data on this product. So you know the, the dimensions, right? The weight of it. And now you're gonna fill this out. So the item price. So as an FBA seller, you're doing Amazon FBA, which is what we're talking about right now. Only look at the right hand side of this chart. You don't have to fill in the left side because the left side is fulfilled by merchant, meaning you are filling it out and sending the products out yourself from your home, okay? So Amazon fulfillment, item price, let's go with the average price, which was like 34.99, so let's say $35. Right, and then we're gonna go ahead and actually just press calculate. So now you're gonna see what it looks like. So you have um, item price of $35. This is what the revenue would be and the cost would be based on how many units you're gonna be selling, right? And then obviously it's only saying that because we only have one unit entered here. So let's fill the rest of this list out, okay? Um, so you have $35 there, shipped to Amazon. We're just gonna guesstimate. Um, we're gonna say it's gonna be like about 50. Now cost of product is where you're gonna go and look at Alibaba, okay? So not AliExpress, but Alibaba.com. And then you're gonna look for this exact product. So a diploma frame, and you're gonna get an average cost, okay? So let's look for the actual one with the tassel on it. This one, right? So this is the exact one, $5 to $15. Is that really what it costs? That's pretty high, right? So keep on scrolling, you'll see, there you go, $4.69 to six. Um, these are mostly dollar to $11, $3 to $5. So let's just say, um, like five bucks, right? So let's say it's five dollars to get this product made. Product cost is five dollars. Now I'll calculate that. And then let's say we sell, what was the average that Viral Launch gave us? It was like 200 and something. So let's just say we sell 150. All right, so now we can get a, a pretty good look at this. So this product, at those numbers, you have a 39% profit margin. Like I said, you always want to shoot between 30 uh, and, and uh, 30 and 50%. Now again, this is a before negotiating. I don't know the actual price to ship this. I don't know uh, what's gonna cost you to send frames, right? I don't know, maybe you can get this cost of product down, right? So maybe you get that down to $4. Then what are you looking at, right? 42%. But again, I would never undershoot it. I always overshoot this. So even if you go six and two, or like eight and two, is there still margin there? 29%, you're just at that, that level, right? Um, and then you're looking at $10 profit per sale. And at the end of the month, if you sold 150 units, you're making $1,500 every single month net profit, all right? So that is how you look at profitability. Uh, and if, if the case was like what it was, 39%, um, I would definitely keep on looking into this and pursuing this product, right? So that is exactly what to look for for a product, how to find it, how to go through the filters and know if it's a good product to sell or not. Uh, and now we're gonna move on to the next step of the process. Yeah, flex, I just wanna win. Yeah, LABB who we running with. Finding your supplier and placing your first order. All right, so contacting suppliers is something that a lot of people overthink and kind of get scared away by, but it's super simple. Now, I understand why I get scared because once you, you know, all the product research is nice and all, but once you start contacting suppliers, it gets very real because now you're talking to manufacturers who talk to sellers all the day, all damn day, right? Every hour of the day. So what you want to do with contact suppliers to make it really simple is go to Alibaba.com, okay? Search for your product. 
uh, and then change from product to suppliers. Now the reason you do this is because um, sometimes, or a lot of times, suppliers will list multiple products. So you're messaging the same supplier multiple times, right? So you can see there's 720 products and you go to suppliers um, and then that's gonna be reduced, right? 109 suppliers. Okay, so now as you go through this, if you see products that are exactly like what you want, uh, all you gotta do is very simple. Click the chat now box. It's literally like uh, Facebook Messenger. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. All right, I'm getting some error here, guys. So sorry about that. But basically all you gotta do, you click chat now and I'll just press click, click contact supplier for now. I'll usually just go, hi, uh, I am very interested in your diploma frame. Um, and the, th the thing about this one is that it's harder to do, use this, but with the, um, the, the messenger one, uh, it'll actually show you the product. You can click the product and it shows you, it'll send the exact product to them. I am just, I'll, I'll do you just say, hi, I'm very interested in diploma frame. Please send me a quote for 500 units, right? And I'll just send it off or whatever units you figure it may be, right? And then you send, 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 and you send to everybody. So you send to everybody with that has the product that you're looking for. Alternative route to this, actually that is kind of a cool hack, is you can just go ahead and add these suppliers to your favorite list, right? So click favorite, okay, favorite, okay, and just go down the line, favorite, right? Favorite everybody, spend like a minute doing that for all the suppliers that you like or that all the suppliers that have the product that you want. Then all you gotta do is you go to your favorites, right? Uh, favorite suppliers. And then once they populate, you have all your people they favorited, click that, it'll contact all of them, right? Make sure that's the right product, okay? And then once you do that, put contact supplier and it sends the message to all of them at the same time. And all you gotta do is enter your message. Hi, I'm interested in this many units. Please send me a quote. And then boom, done, okay? So that is literally how you contact suppliers. Now, how do you vet suppliers? What are you looking for when you actually have a supplier and you're like, hey, is this the right person? So the only way to really vet a product is to get samples, okay? So make sure once you narrow down your people, you get samples of your product. And I will never um, skimp on samples because I've been burned so many times not getting a sample that I just really, really highly suggest it, okay? So get a sample, but before that, the main thing I'm looking for is communication. If you're gonna be working with a person long-term for your business, you wanna make sure that they ha have great communication, uh, they're not leaving you um, for three days without answering your questions. Uh, so communication is key, and then next, of course, is the price point. Can they produce um, the product that you want at a great price point? Is it competitive pricing to uh, the other suppliers? And what I'll usually do, I'll actually ask the supplier, hey, there's a lot of other suppliers I'm talking to, there's a lot of people selling this product, what makes your product better than all the other suppliers? And the suppliers that actually can, you know, point out little nuances, little things that they're doing that you wouldn't have known otherwise um, is, is someone that I'll keep on talking to. So the, sometimes they'll be like, we're using this kind of rubber where other manufacturers are using this kind of rubber or our, our material has this kind of covering, coating that other people don't use, right? And then now you're getting ideas for your product and you know that this product, this supplier is knowledgeable in that product and in this, in this product that you wanna produce, right? So can they produce at competitive pricing? And is that pricing something gonna be a trade-off for quality? So you're looking for quality and you're looking for price and you're looking for communication. Those are my key things that I'm looking for. So if I find a supplier that, you know what, that maybe it's you know a few cents more or a little bit extra, but they have really outstanding quality um, and they know what they're talking about and they're communicating really well, then that supplier I'm gonna go with. Now hopefully you find a few of those suppliers or samples and then based on that sample, you go with the supplier that prov provided the best sample uh, and that's easiest to work with, okay? So that is how you contact suppliers. That's kind of how you vet suppliers in a nutshell. Um, next, we're gonna talk about how many units should you actually order. So we're gonna go to the computer for this one uh, and back to the computer. And what I like about Viral Launch is you have the export option. So this is just the diploma frame section, right? The diploma frames again, that page with the Viral Launch Intelligence, uh, Market Intelligence dropdown. And I just went ahead and exported it. You can see the download file here, CSV and I already put it into uh, Google Sheets for, for you guys, right? So it's in Google Sheets. This is exactly the vi vi viral launch data that we got. And now what we're gonna look at is the monthly sales, okay? So let's go sort it from highest to lowest. Now I'm gonna mention one thing after this is that these sales are estimate sales, okay? These are all estimated sales. Viral launch does not have exact uh, sale data and I'll show you the way to get real sale data after this, but first is to just know this is how we're gonna estimate our products um, inventory. So what I like to do, I'll remove the outliers. Okay, so this um, American flat uh, is, is outliers for sales. Okay, so we'll move those guys and then we'll go ahead and grab the average of this. So go ahead and go average and that's 280. So you're looking at about 280 um, average sales. Okay, 
per month for this for, for this product. Okay, so 280 is what we're going with. So let's put here 280 per month. Okay, so now we're gonna break that down into days. So 280 divided by 30 days. So that's like nine, 9.3. So let's just say that's nine products per day. Okay, so 280 products a month, nine products a day is what you would sell if you were to get in here and be within the average. Okay, so now what we need to know is your, your lead time. So how many days does it take for your product to be manufactured and then get into the Amazon. So basically your lead time is place an order, how many days until it is now in the Amazon warehouse. So let's just say it's um, 40 days, okay? So 40 days. So now we're gonna see, we're gonna go 40 times nine. So that is 360 units. Okay, so what does this mean? What does this, what did, why did I find this number? So you're selling 280 units a month, right? And it takes you 40 days to get into, from your order to Amazon. That means that you need to order your next inventory batch when you have 360 units left, right? Because if you order, say, say you now have 360 units left and you order it on that day, by the time your units get into Amazon, you're gonna have zero units left because you're selling nine per day, right? So we're trying to figure out how many, um, like how many, how many units do you need to have before it's too late to reorder. So if you only had 300 units left and then you're placing your reorder, then you're gonna run out of stock. Now that's why inventory forecasting is so important because you don't wanna order on your first order too many units and then not be able to sell them all um, and run into long-term storage. At the same time, you don't wanna order too little units uh, and then run out of inventory. And then because once you run out of inventory, once you run out of stock, all that work you did to gain traction has been lost, right? So it's very, uh, it's very important to make sure you're keeping track of this. So now that we know you need 360 units, I like to order at least two months on hand. That means for your first order, you're looking at about 720 units, right? You order 720 units, um, you sell you know, 360 units. Once you're left with 360 units, you need to place your second order. So I like to give myself at least a two month buffer, right? And then you need to also account for, maybe you might do giveaways at the beginning to gain some traction. Maybe I'll just round it up and say 750 units. And that is how we're gonna forecast our inventory and see how much you need to actually order for your first order. Because sometimes people will just give you a blank number, right? Like you should order 300 units for your first order. Well, if it was this product uh, and you wanna get into the sales range, 300 units, you're screwed, right? You screwed yourself, you're gonna have to run out of stock and you're gonna have to run out of inventory. So that is how we kind of, kind of plan ahead and look at how to do this and just know that inventory forecasting is an ongoing process for all your products all the time. It's not just for your first order, but this is kind of how we're figuring out, okay, 750 units, that's what I wanna look for and that's what I wanna shoot for and that's just based on this, right? Now, like I mentioned earlier, there is, these are all estimated sales. The only way to get real sales is to do something called um, the 999 cart trick method. So uh, you go to Amazon, you get one of these products and you add it to your cart. Okay, so now you have uh, one of these in your cart, right? You're gonna go ahead and go to quantity, go to 10 plus and go 999, update. What's gonna happen is you're gonna see this seller only has 205 of these available. Now this is the only way to see real data from Amazon. So now what you're gonna do, you're gonna go in here. You're going to put say 205 and you're gonna put the product name here, right? And link, like put a link to the actual product. Uh, and then do this at the same exact time every single day. So right now it's 4.42. So let's say like, let's say it's 4, 4.30, right? So 4.30 every day, you're gonna go back and you're gonna check again. And then maybe tomorrow you'll see it's 185. And then maybe the next day you'll see it's 160. And the next day it's, you know, so forth and so forth. And you know exactly how many units per day this person is selling. And I'll track like the top five people uh, in that market and then go from there uh, for about a week. And then if you do that for about a week, you'll know uh, a good number about the real sales of what these people are actually selling. Then you can combine that with maybe the estimated sales to give yourself a good uh, number to work off of, off of when selecting which products or how many units to order with your first product order. So that is how to contact suppliers, how I vet my suppliers, and how I know how many units to order from my suppliers when I'm placing that first order. Yeah, flex. I just wanna win. Yeah. LA BB who we running with. Yeah. Shipping. So now we are talking about how to actually get this product that's being made for you in China or wherever you ordered from and get it all the way through to the United States in to Amazon's warehouses, right? So the first thing we actually gotta do when talking about shipping is create your listing. So we're taking a bit of a leapfrog to get to the next section uh, so that we can do something and create our FN SKU. So there's two things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a UPC code. Uh, there's two, like, okay, so let me just explain this. I know this can be confusing, all right? 
So you need to generate an FN SKU to give to your uh, suppliers so that they can put that FN SKU on your products, okay? So you are familiar with barcodes, right? So you buy a book or you buy a product, right? They got a barcode on the back, right? That's a UPC code. So what you need to make is an FN SKU for your Amazon product, it's the barcode for Amazon products, called FN SKU. And to make an FN SKU, you need to have a UPC code, okay? So you need to purchase a UPC code, put it, create a listing, create a product, and then that product will be assigned an FN SKU, okay? And then that FN SKU, you're gonna send that to your supplier on, on Amazon. So I know it can be confusing, so let's go ahead and just do that right now. So we're gonna go to Amazon now, right? You're in Seller Central, uh, you signed up for your account, now you're in your Seller Central account. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just go to Seller Central, on Amazon.com and sign up. So you're gonna need an account, right? Um, you can get professional individual account. So now you're gonna go into inventory, right? You're gonna click add a product. And then when you're on this page, you're gonna click, um, don't use this. What you wanna do actually is click, I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Okay, so you do that. Uh, and then you're gonna have to select your category. So all you can, all you, what you can do is actually just type in your product. So let's say we're doing the, dipl the diploma frame. Diploma frame, search that and then it's gonna show you your most relevant uh, categories, right? So document frames, perfect. So select document frame category, and then here's where you're gonna put in your stuff to create your listing, right? So your product ID is your UPC code. So where do you get a UPC code? Uh, I'm to keep this video as short as possible, as humanly possible, I'm just gonna put a link down in the description for places that you can get your UPC codes. Um, so you can just grab them, right? So I'm gonna put one in here. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and click UPC, right? And then now this is when you name your product. So the name of your product will, is what your name of the product. So diploma frame. Um, this obviously is not gonna be the real title that we use when we sell on Amazon. We're gonna have more keywords in there, but we can just put in something simple uh, because this is actually gonna show up on the FNSQ when you print it. So I'll just put diploma frame and then whatever the details it is, like 24, 24 inches, whatever, certificate holder, whatever it may be, okay? Brand name is you, your stuff, JT, cool supplies uh, and then the same is going to be for the manufacturer okay so next variation if you don't have a variation uh, you don't have to put that in so variation is if you sometimes you're on amazon you'll click on a listing and you'll see there's like blue red yellow white brown so different color variations, size variations quantity variations right uh, but you're not having any of that for now and then you're gonna set your price so you set your price at whatever you want to set your price at. Again, all this can change, right? This is all, we're just setting up the ghost of the listing. In the next section, we will actually fill up the listing properly, but right now we just want to get the FN SKU, okay? Um, this here is for your own, um, your own in, internal um, rank. And then you select your fulfillment channel. So fulfilled by Amazon, so we're doing right Amazon FBA, and then just go hit next, and then photos, go skip, save changes, skip that for now. And then you're done, right? So now you're gonna get this page, right? And you're just gonna click Amazon barcode. Save and continue. Okay, you get this page. Um, add dangerous goods. Any batteries in this? No. Is product considered a dangerous goods hazardous item? No, right? It's a picture frame. Submit. There we go. Save and continue. And you're done. All right, so it went right into um, adding, creating a shipping plan. We're just gonna go back to inventory and go back to manage inventory. And then that product should be here, right? So your product is now here. What you wanna do is click on this and then click on print item labels, right? So you got your ghost of your listing is done, it's created. So you just go ahead and print your labels, open it up, and there you go. That is now your FN SKU, uh, JT Cool Supplies Diploma Frame. Then you can actually change this uh, if you want to, um, but for the most part, just keep it like that, new. You can even put made in China at the bottom, um, but just download that and then that's what you're gonna be sending to your supplier and they're gonna know exactly where to do that but make sure they're putting it all in your boxes, okay? So that is your FNSQ, it is created. So now we can actually talk about the shipping because you need to send this to your supplier in order before you can actually uh, initiate shipping, right? So now that that's done, what we're gonna do is talk about air versus sea. So your first shipment into Amazon, uh, it's getting exciting, what should you do? Should you send it by sea, through the ocean, or by air, over the air, right? Um, so what I'm gonna say is my general rule of thumb, okay? So for your first order, it makes the most sense to ship it by air. Okay, it is going to eat into your margins, meaning uh, it's gonna cost more money. However, 
the speed is what is the most valuable, especially for that first order when you're first starting out and you're testing this product out, right? To ship, especially if it's a smaller unit, okay? A, a smaller order with a, with, a, with a regular size product. Now, for example, say it's like you have, for some reason, your first product is super heavy, right? It's super, super heavy and air just doesn't make sense. And of course, go by C. But if you're within a regular normal range where you are maybe just profiting or even breaking even at that first order, uh, going by air, it still makes sense because it proves that market for you, it proves that product for you, it gets it in there fast, and it allows you to buy time and then from your second order, go by C. So f ship by air from at first is my always my suggestion, right? So if you're doing like 300 to 900 units, whatever it is, go by air because C, you're really only saving huge amounts of money when you're in the thousands, right? A thousand, two thousand, three thousand units. And then yeah, of course, C is gonna be saving you a lot of money, but if you're saving a few hundred bucks um, just to go see and it's gonna take you an extra 35 to 60 days to get there, um, it's not worth it, right? So first order, go by air, bite the cost, get there fast, start selling that product just so you know it's good. Second order, if you need to replenish quickly, air again and then you can plan uh, from there, okay, now this product is selling, it's working, now I can go by C and actually have a huge order of inventory, save a lot of money and get it there while the product is still selling on Amazon, all right? So that's how that's gonna go. Uh, now what we're gonna do is actually go into the computer again um, and then show you how to create your shipping plan. Here's the product we just made, right? You're gonna click on this, uh, you're gonna go to actions and then you're gonna go to uh, send replenish inventory, okay? So now we are at send replenish inventory. So you're gonna be creating a new shipping plan, right? Ship from is where you're shipping it from. So there's a few things you wanna you want know here. If you're shipping it directly um, from the for supplier to Amazon, then ship from is gonna be your manufacturer or your supplier's address. However, there's another option uh, for, for shipping is if you ship by air, you ship it from the supplier to your own house, right? And then from your own house, you're gonna send that to Amazon, then it would be your own house. Um, or if you use a freight forwarder, and then they're shipping from the supplier to the freight forwarder's warehouse in the States, and then from that warehouse to Amazon, then you can use uh, the freight forwarder's warehouse as well, okay? So whatever, however you're gonna ship, that's where you put the ship from, and then packing is case packed products, that means all, everything in this case is the same, or individual packed as if I was throwing, you know, this camera and the glasses and everything in a box, uh, that would be individual pack. So you're gonna do that and go ahead and click continue to shipping plan. All right, so on this page, all you gotta do uh, is enter the number of units that you're sending in, right? So it's gonna have units per case, number of cases. So if you're sending in 100 units uh, and you have 50 units per case and you have two cases, then that's all you gotta do, right? So make sure you get this right. Don't, don't put it backwards. Make sure it's correct uh, because it, it matters, okay? So that's done. So go ahead and press continue. Who preps, right? So there's a little drop down who preps. Um, merchant preps, because we're doing that all, uh, we know exactly what to do, that's what we're doing right now, so we're gonna prep it ourselves. Continue. Print labels, this is gonna give you your FN SKU, but we already did that, right, so you don't actually need to do that, but you go ahead, if you pre press print labels right now, you'll get the same thing, and it's gonna have a 100 of them, right, because uh, that's how many you have, but you could have just sent that one into your supplier already, so that's good to go. Press continue. So now you're gonna review your shipments. So now what you have, um, you can actually name this whatever you want. So you can name it just for your own organizational purposes, right? So I could call this like Diploma Frame. If I could spell correctly, that'd be better. Diploma Frame, right? It's gonna give you where you're gonna actually ship this to. So we can go ahead and press approve and continue, make sure it's all correct, right? Uh, one SKU, so sometimes you can make a shipping plan for multiple products at one time. That's why that's one. You have two cases, you have 100 units. Approve and continue. And at this point, um, what you're gonna get is actually an address. One more button, work on shipment. So there you go. Now you have your ship to address, right? So that's what you can actually give to your supplier if you're gonna send that directly to Amazon from your supplier. That's where this has to go. Your product is gonna go to this um, warehouse in Dallas and then it's gonna distribute from there, okay? So now what you're gonna do is prepare your shipment. So review your contents, right? Um, lesson truck load, this is where you're talking about um, like uh, pallet shipping, so we're gonna keep it on small parcel delivery, right? And then because I my ship from address is directly from a manufacturer here in China, um, I don't have the option of UPS or FedEx. So you're gonna choose whatever your manufacturer uh, decides or whoever you're doing your shipping. So if you have a freight forwarder, um, contact them to, to know what you're using here. If you're shipping from the States, you can just pick UPS or FedEx, right? Shipment pack, packaging. So multiple boxes, use web form here, right? And then what they're gonna do, they're gonna just confirm with you uh, the configuration of your boxes, right? So box weight, it's like, I don't know, just say 20 pounds. 
box dimensions are uh, 12 by 12 by 12. Number of boxes, one. Units per box, 50, right? Oh, sorry. Number of boxes, two. Units per box, box weight, okay, good. Confirm, it's done. And then you gotta go ahead, print your box labels and complete shipment, okay? So print box labels, and then you're gonna get different labels for your box, and then you can send these right to your freight forwarder, okay? So it's done, complete shipment, and you are done. You have completed your shipping plan, you know exactly how you're gonna ship your product, right? That, so that is taken care of, you know how to create the ghost of your listing, and you're ready to go, literally at this point, if you follow through this video so far, you have found a product, got it manufactured, um, you created a listing, you sent it out, coming to Amazon and now you're actually going to go through how to create your listing so that it was it'll be made to sell your product, rank your product so you can make more money. So let's get right to it. Yeah. Bless. I just want to win. Yeah. LA BB who we running with. Yeah. Listing creation. So now we're getting to the fun part, putting this stuff onto Amazon, the stuff that your customers are actually going to see and base their purchase decision off of whether they're going to give you money or give someone else money. It comes down to this listing, it comes down to everything you put into this uh, and whether or not they actually see your product in the first place is going to be dependent on this as well. So hopefully as you go along this video, you've learned a lot. Uh, hopefully either you're watching this first time, you're taking notes, you're going along, you're taking in the information or if you're actually doing this now and following along. Um, I mean, congratulations for getting this far, all right? So now what we're gonna use for listing creation, the first thing about a listing is that you need to know that it's not just about making something that looks beautiful, okay? It's about making something that will sell, okay? Because unlike a physical store, on e-commerce, on Amazon, this is all they have. This is the pictures, the title, the description, the bullet points, it's all they're basing this purchase decision off of, and then reviews once you get reviews, right? But you're never gonna get reviews if you can't get the first few people to buy the product to begin with. So. How do you know if a listing is gonna do well? My rule of thumb is just model it after those who are already successful, right? You don't wanna be a pioneer and try different random things. Look at those that have already pioneered the space for you and take from what they've done, right? You always can tell the pioneer because they have the arrows in their back, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and click into this guy um, and we're going to model his listing, meaning his bullet point. Let's look at his bullet points. Let's see first of all if he has a good listing, okay? It's actually good because this guy's killing it and there's a lot that can be approved here, okay? For example, the titles for this should be more noticeable. So design, material, quality. They should stand out. They should be all caps. They should have, um, you know, things that make it pop. Uh, let's see what else he goes into. Document frame, perfect certificates, award, documents frame includes a white beveled mat, wood frame with polished shatterproof glass that gives a clear view of your document for reserve your certificates. So this is great. We're talking about the benefits of this product, right? Shatterproof glass, clear view, uh, preserves your awards, uh, durable, gallery style frame, shatterproof glass, again, said the same kind of thing. Water certificates, awards, and documents easily, quickly, and securely. Um, perfect, so one thing I wanna mention about bullet points, okay, is don't talk too much about the feature, talk about the benefit. So don't talk about uh, what it does, talk about why what it does matters for me, for the customer, right? So I could say, these glasses have yellow lenses, right? Big deal. But if I say, these glasses lenses will protect your eyes from the bright blue light of computer screens and reduce headaches, right? That's two different things, but it's the same topic, right? So instead of talking about a feature, talk about why is that a feature important? Why do I care? Because everyone is looking for what is in it for me, right? What is in it for me? Why would I choose this one over anything else? It's got to have something in it for me, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to say, usually I'll look through all the listings and see the best, take a few items from each of the, um, of the listings, take my bit, bits and pieces, but just to keep this video going, uh, we'll just use this one, okay? So now we're gonna go to Viral Launch again. Handy, trusty, dandy Viral Launch. They have this tool called, if you go here, we know you're familiar with product discovery now, you know market intelligence, I showed you keyword research, um, and then now we have Listing Builder again. It's an amazing tool, right? If you're a lumberjack, this is your, this is the difference between having a chainsaw versus having an ax versus having a pocket knife trying to cut down a tree. Okay, so you click on Listing Builder, right? You go to Builder, all you gotta do is enter a keyword. Okay, so you go ahead and enter a keyword and you put diploma frame and you search. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna pull up the most relevant keywords. So this is based off of the same engine that they use their keyword research. So they're giving you a priority score and they're giving you an opportunity score and they're giving you the amount of search volume. So when you're creating a listing, you wanna have as much of these, um, these keywords in there as possible so you can rank better, right? So these are the amount of searches, see 26,000. Uh, 
This is a total amount of searches of all of these listing of things added up, okay? And it'll tell you how optimized is your listing. This one needs work because obviously there's nothing in here. So let's go ahead and grab from this title. And I don't like putting, especially if you're a brand new brand, you don't need to put your brand name in the beginning because no one actually cares or knows what it is. Um, and it has no effect on their buying decision. No one's going, oh, American Flat. I definitely need to buy them because they're American Flat. I mean, some people might be, um, but I don't know who those guys are, okay? So first thing you put is the size, it seems like. Document frame, made for document, sized this to this with matte. Let's actually go back and see what other titles are looking like. Luxurious document frame, flagship, I think that's the brand name, diploma frame with tassel, shadow box reel. So, okay, one thing I wanna mention when creating a listing and creating a title is that you wanna have as many keywords as possible, but you also wanna keep it um, very relevant for the title. I, I, like once I get past dot, 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 I'm not reading that anymore and it, it doesn't matter. I want a title, when I'm shopping personally on Amazon um, and what I found works best is having a title that gives all the details I need, but it still seems like an organic title that is actually a title of what the product is and it's not just a bunch of keywords stuffed in there, right? So instead of just going diploma frame, certificate degree, diploma, eight by 11, holder, college, document, graduation frame for, for dogs and cats, right? You know what I mean? Like throwing a bunch of stuff in there that doesn't matter uh, is, not gonna, is not gonna help you. So let's see, put in the dimensions, seems to be good. So let's just grab this. Diploma frame with tassel, because that's what we want to do, right? Tassel, shadow box, what is that? Real wood and glass, golden rim, 11 by 16 frame. But let's put that into the title. And you'll see what happens when you put these into the title, it, the, it'll actually cross out. So, you know, this is used, this is used, uh, this frame was used, uh, diploma, right? So you know exactly what was used, so you know what is left to work with. So 11 by 16, 11 by 14. Diploma frame with tassel, shadow. Diploma frame with tassel. Let's actually put this in here. 4.5 by 11, which is paper size. Real wood and glass. What did that other guy say? Glass, what is glass? Shatterproof glass. Um, durable glass for degree, certificate, and document. Okay, so we're gonna use half of the total search volume. It's a very, you know, one piece title, nothing too flashy, nothing, oh, it's not over keyword stuffed, tells you exactly what you need to know. It's a diploma frame with tassel, 8.5 by 11, real wood and durable glass for degree, certificate, and, and documents. So now what we're gonna do is go into do the features. So for the features, um, let's just grab from one of these guys. So here's an example of terrible, terrible bullet points, right? It just looks messy. It's not telling you, it's giving you features instead of benefits. So let's go back to the first guy because he had a great, list of features and benefits. So one part about writing bullet points is knowing your customer. Who's buying this? Where are they buying it for? This is someone who wants to show off a, some piece of paper that they have, right? <laughs> like a degree, uh, I'm just salty because I, I don't have one, but a, a degree, a diploma, uh, some kind of award, right? So I would make it something that sticks out to them. So like uh, prestige, right? All caps. And then you can go into um, the, instead of design, right? change the title, make it all caps, Let's grab this. Copy that and just re redo it a little bit. Real wood, 11, oh, I'm over my limit here. So I'll just say, real wood, what are the main things here? Real wood document frame, thing I need in here, 8.5 by 11. I should space that out as according to this. So that's spaced out, better. Observe your Great accomplishment. Graduation, right? So I'm pulling that now. College, bachelor's, master's. And I'll work on that, right? And then I'll go into the next point. Material, shatterproof glass, material. Still not sure if I spelled that right. Material, shatterproof glass to protect. Sorry, the recording cut out there. I don't know where I lost you guys at, but I was just going through this. Um, and yeah, I was just saying, that's how I was gonna write the listing. So you go through here, um, you put in the title, and you use this, um, and, and make sure that you're being as relevant as possible at the same time, um, making it as clear as possible, showing the, the benefits and not just the features. Um, and then you do the same thing for the description. And then the nice thing about this is then you can use, what if say you're done all the, all here, the features, you did the description, you can move your unused 
um, search terms to the backend search terms. So now you have all these backend search terms which you can grab and put into uh, the backend of your listing. Okay, so that's really why I love to use uh, Listing Builder. Creating a listing is not that hard, it just it takes a lot of time, a lot of thought process. I couldn't obviously create a great listing right now uh, because, obviously because I need more time to think, uh, but if you're actually gonna do it, do a lot of research, look at your top competitors, piece in, t take the best pieces from theirs, put it into yours, uh, and make sure your unique features are being showcased as well. Okay, and another thing that's cool about this, it'll show you like misspellings. So sometimes there'll be misspellings, certificate, certificare, uh, uh, diploma. So <laughs> things like that that are actually being searched for uh, that you just would never know if it wasn't for this tool. All right, so that's how you create a listing that's meant to sell and it's all using ViralLunch as a great tool uh, and using a little bit of common sense and a little bit of copywriting on your end to make this all work. All right, so the final step of the process. Yeah, flex, I just wanna win. All right, you made it. We are here. Your product is in and we're ready to get going. We need to turn on those PPC, the pay-per-click advertisements so you can get that product out there in front of people so they can start clicking it, they can start looking at it, and they can start buying it from you. You can start making money, getting reviews, all that good stuff, okay? So now we're gonna create your first automatic campaign for your product. Uh, it's gonna be very simple. Um, there's more, of course, that we can go into and PPC is very extensive, but for all you need to know right now is how to set up this. So we go into advertising, uh, campaign manager, and then campaign manager create campaign and you're gonna end up here okay so sponsored products uh, you're gonna do that don't worry about sponsored brands okay so campaign name so this is just the name of the campaign for yourself uh, no one is gonna see this customers aren't gonna see this just for you so go ahead and call it like diploma frame diploma frame auto one oh geez auto one right and that's just for yourself start date and end date so typically I don't touch it because start date is just today, the day you're making this, and then the end date, I just leave it blank and open because I'll usually just come in and end it myself whenever I wanna end it. So I just leave it open-ended, uh, and then if I wanna end the campaign, I do it on my own. Um, and then the only time I would actually do a start date end it is if it's a certain promotion. So if it's Christmas, whatever reason you wanna have from like December you know, 13th to 26th, then you can do it like that, okay? So then you're gonna set your daily budget. Now your daily budget is really up to you. It's really about how aggressive you wanna play and how you wanna play the game. But for the most part, you want to go out there and, and get it going. So of course, it's gonna depend on how much you can afford and how much you want to, are willing to spend. But at the same time, you wanna get that out there, your product out there, so you can start getting that traffic and most importantly, you can start getting that data, right? The more clicks, the more people that see your product, the more people that look at it and buy it, the more data you're getting. So typically, as it says right here, most campaigns with a budget of $30 run throughout the day. So you can start off at $30 and adjust from there. Right, see how that spends. Depending on your product, depending on you know the market, it's all gonna be different. Different. So automatic targeting is what we're gonna do here. Okay, so automatic targeting is your automatic campaign. Of course, manual ca targeting is more in depth, but all you need to do when you're launching is set automatic, okay? So now we're going to your bidding strategy. So for your bidding strategy, for your first one, you're gonna go with fixed bids. Uh, don't worry about the dynamic bids up and down, uh, down, down, up and down. That's just, that's very much for, um, um, getting more fine-tuned and and looking at conversions whereas for the fix this fixed bids if you have your fixed bid at like a dollar okay doesn't mean you're gonna pay a dollar per click it means you're gonna pay up to a dollar per click that's the most you're willing to pay for a click right and you want to have it's more in control because with these ones it's trying to adjust up and down but it doesn't have enough data to really do a good job of that so you want to have fixed bids so you have your own data as you go forward and you're just getting as many clicks as possible and getting it in through the door okay so campaign bid, uh, strategy fix, don't worry about this. So the group name is a name for a group of ads, right? So you can just name whatever, group auto one, group uh, whatever, Frank, uh, group one, okay? <laughs> Do whatever you want, organize it however you want. So now we are going to click on the product, add that, right? JT Cool Supplies Diploma Frame. Uh, come down and then set your bid. So again, uh, you're gonna have a suggested bid by Amazon, right? But I wouldn't, really look at that too much. Uh, it's really about just putting out a bid and then adjusting as you go. So the thing about a, a bid is, like I said, it's the maximum you're willing to pay for the click. Um, and you don't wanna bid too low, you don't wanna bid too high, because if you bid too low, you're not gonna be, end up getting any clicks, right? So you're gonna have a $30, $30 a day budget, but you only end up spending like $6 a day, uh, even though you're willing to spend 30 because you're just getting outbid by everybody. On the flip side, if you you know bid way too high, then you're gonna spend your budget within the first you know few hours of the day uh, and you're not getting 
you know, you're not getting it throughout the day, right? Uh, and then you're, you either have to increase your budget or decrease your bid. So I'll just go and say like a buck 22, okay? Um, now, one thing I do wanna mention is you'll notice that the bids always end in a weird number, like 83, 77, or this one's 45, right? 45, I wouldn't end it with because what most people do is they try to end off at flat numbers or even uh, numbers like zeros, fives, right? So 40, 45, 50, 55. So if you can, you know, outbid somebody by one cent and that can make all the difference. You can get every click over someone else uh, just because you're willing to put 46, right? 83, uh, 22. So always, you know, play, end it number funny. Don't worry about this for now. Just set a default bid. Keep it very simple. Don't worry about negative um, keywords for now. All you gotta do now, click launch campaign and you are good to go. You have set up your first automatic campaign, diploma frame auto one, daily budget is $30, um, fixed bid of $1.22, right? And then you can go to campaign manager and then you can see your product, right? So this is how you're gonna see it. Um, you're gonna see, uh, this is a dummy account obviously, so it's actually not an active account anymore, so I can't do a lot of stuff. So this is your product here, the type of um, targeting, start date, this is the budget, this is how much you spent, this is how many orders it generated, and that's how many uh, uh, sales and uh, revenue you've generated from those orders, okay? So that is it, you guys. You have now found, manufactured, shipped, created and launched your first product on Amazon. All right, so I'm sure a lot of you at this point are thinking, holy smokes, JT, that was great, but that was a lot of information overload, right? Your, your brain is firing thinking this, that, this, and that, and you have more ideas, you have more questions. Um, that's good, that's natural, right? There's a lot of FBA courses out there, full courses that charge you whatever, you know, hundreds of dollars, and we just covered a majority of their curriculum right now, so don't, forget about those guys. You got it, right? You, you just learned a, month, a lot of it. Now, that being said, there is a lot more to learn, right? I'm sure you have a lot of questions. And I do, of course, have a course, a program of my own, the Empire Academy. Uh, link is in the description where I go way deeper than this, right? Some guys cover just this. We go way deeper than this. Right now, what I gave you was the skeletal structure, right? I gave you the skeleton, the bones of the business. So you can actually use this, uh, maybe, you know, add a few tweaks, learn a few more things on top of it, and then go ahead and launch a product. That was my intention of this video. I wanted you to be able to, you know, have this, now you have the knowledge of it, the system, you can go and launch a product on your own. But if you want more, if you wanna add you know, the, the, the skin and the, and, and the muscle uh, to that skeleton, get those gains, right? You wanna add that to that skeleton, then that's where you're gonna get, it's gonna be Empire Academy. Link in the description, we are running a promotion discount right now, 50% off, limited time, and um, that's where all those students from the beginning, Aria, Dana, Dusty, Michael, those six and seven figure students that I showed at the beginning, they were from the Empire Academy. Right. Also, what I wanted to do for you, because you watched this far, I wanna answer any questions that you have, right? For Amazon FBA, so because you watched this far, put Empire question, followed by your question, in the comments below, and I will get back to you uh, and answer you, okay? Um, and one last thing for this video, again, I hope you did leave a like, but I do wanna mention that I also have the free master class. Now, if you want more strategy, you know, the day-to-day -day strategy, the behind the scenes, the behind the actual thought process of the, the hacks and the tricks and the, and the practices that I do to build my business and to help other people build their Amazon business as well, I have more free training, okay? So there's the academy, and then there's a free master class which you can join uh, that I'm hosting, uh, limited time slots for that. Uh, so if you wanna join that, join that now because everyone teaches Amazon FBA a little bit differently, but I like to teach the foundations and I like to teach what I call the pillars, right? Because that's where you build everything off. That's where you build your empire off of. So if you like that and you like the no bullshit way of teaching Amazon FBA, then make sure to join that master class. Uh, I'm gonna only be hosting it for a little bit while longer now. So join that if you're interested. And that's all I got for you guys. That was a one hefty video. I think I recorded in segments. It must've been 20 minutes of segment. That's probably an hour, two hour video. I'm not sure at this point, but thank you for watching it. Thank you for uh, sticking to it. And hopefully it did help you out. And it gave you that guideline that I wish I had when I started out, right? Because again, it all comes down to choices. You can choose to watch this video uh, and forget about it and do nothing. Or you can choose to now that you've watched this video, go ahead, pursue it, take it farther pursue learning Amazon FBA more and actually make this happen because this is a business model that hundreds of people are doing every single day, making money from it. And I've seen it, I've helped people do it. I'm doing it myself and I know that you can do it too. So don't let anything stop you, all right? That's my little motivational uh, speech to you. I believe you can do it. You should believe you can do it, all right? I'm JT Franco. You are now an empire builder and don't forget what that means. It means that 
your empire awaits. I am made to be free.